Okay, it's time to talk about burns and injuries. So how does the skin respond to an injury? Here are the objectives and standards, pause and peruse. Okay, how can your skin be injured? Well, one way is from a callus. So it's increased thickness of skin. Why do they form? Uh, your skin may be subjected to mechanical stress. So the keratinocytes in the stratum basale divide more rapidly to provide thickened skin for more protection. A blister, it's a raised portion of skin filled with fluid, sometimes clear fluid, sometimes there's blood. Why would there be blood? Well, the blister involved to the dermis. If the blister only involves the epidermis, there will be no blood because the epidermis is avascular. So either the layers of the epidermis separate, so the stratum corneum, lucidum, granulosum, spinosum, basale, there's separation between those layers, or there's separation between the dermis and the epidermis, so at the spot where the epidermal ridges happen. Usually this is caused by pressure or friction. Okay, so wounds. A wound is a break in body tissue. A contusion or bruise is an internal wound, so bleeding on the inside. The speed and the effectiveness of the skin repair depends on the type of wound. So we're gonna cover five main types of wounds, incisions, abrasions, punctures, avulsions, and lacerations. Ready to get started? Okay, so what type of skin injury results when layers of the epidermis separate? Do you remember? That's a blister. Okay, so let's get to the wounds. An incision. It's caused by a cut from a sharp edge. So a surgeon could do an incision before performing surgery, but you could also get an incision when you're like chopping potatoes. The bleeding is usually rapid and heavy. Note, with deep incisions, muscles, tendons, nerves, they can all be damaged, which becomes more serious. Abrasions. So it's caused by rubbing or scraping against a hard, rough surface. So if you fall off your bike, as an example. The bleeding is usually limited. That doesn't mean it doesn't bleed, but it doesn't usually bleed as heavily. A note, you must clean an abrasion well because it often can have dirt embedded in there and uh, you wanna prevent infection. So you wanna get the dirt, any germs out. And a lot of times that cleaning is painful. Puncture. All right, so it's caused by a pointed object that's piercing a small hole in the skin. The bleeding can have light external bleeding, but there can be more serious internal bleeding that you may or may not be aware of. Note, this type of wound has the danger of getting an infection because again, um, depending on how deep it is, it could have um, spread bacteria further into the body. And also tetanus is a severe risk, and we will talk about that later. Avulsion. So it's caused by accidents like explosions and animal bites that literally tear away tissue. It can result in complete amputation. So a finger could be blown off, an entire hand could be blown off, okay? Avulsion, or it could just be a bunch of the tissue. The bleeding here, again, is going to be heavy and rapid. Body parts that are torn away should be kept cold and moist. Um, and get to you know an emergency room as quickly as possible to be able to reattach them. And then laceration. Laceration is most similar to an incision, but it can be caused by various objects that result in a jagged, irregular wound, so not a nice, neat cut. So it could be from a serrated knife, as an example. The bleeding, again, can be rapid and extensive, especially because sometimes it's harder to close that type of wound. It can lead to more noticeable scar because uh, the edges aren't smooth and don't line up as nicely. All right, what type of wound is at a greater risk for tetanus? Do you remember? 
That's a puncture wound. When skin or tissue is torn away, it is this type of wound. Avulsion. When skin is rubbed or scraped against a rough surface, it is this type of wound. Abrasion. How should wounds be treated? Well, we're just gonna cover the basics. So some basic first aid. First, you wanna stop the bleeding. Usually you're gonna to try to apply pressure. So more severe cases, that means putting a tourniquet, so cutting off the blood flow um, below. Um, so you're gonna tie the tourniquet above the wound, so to cut off blood flow below that, um, so that it does stop the bleeding. You want to clean the wound for sure. Remember with abrasions, that can be a big um, problem and with puncture wounds. You're gonna to wanna to close the wound. So sometimes you might need stitches or sutures. They can use skin glue, which is called dermabond. They can use staples. Sometimes in surgery, doctors will use staples um, and they can use strips, okay? All of those serve the purpose of closing the wound to hold the edges close together so the skin can heal, heal properly and you want to protect the wound. So use dressings, bandages, clean, sterile, change them often. What is one way to treat wounds? Okay, so stopping the bleeding, cleaning it, closing the wound, protecting the wound. How is skin repaired? And we did talk about this before, but let's talk about it again. So how is skin repaired? So we have inflammation, right? There's inflammation and regeneration and they're kind of occurring at the same time, right? But inflammation, the signs and symptoms of inflammation are swelling, warmth, redness, pain. Remember, signs are things that are objective that can be noticed by a physician or someone treating you. Symptoms are things that are more subjective. So like what's your pain scale, okay? Um, and inflammation results in increased blood flow, diffusion, attraction of white blood cells, um, and it helps begin the process of healing. And then the next stage is regeneration. But again, they can be intermingled. Okay, so in the process of wound healing, you're gonna have bleeding and clot formation. So you need to stop the bleeding, okay? A clot is gonna form. And then the inflammatory response is gonna happen. We're gonna get a scab form. The white blood cells are gonna be removing debris. There's gonna be clotting around the edges of the wound to kind of isolate the area. So anything bad that might be in that wound is not gonna spread around your body. And then there's gonna be rebuilding. So collagen is gonna be used as a scaffold to rebuild. So imagine, you know, when somebody is like redoing the siding on a house, you might see a scaffolding built. Collagen is used like that. So we can like lay a framework and then rebuild. And then maturation is gonna be strengthening, returning it to its original functioning. Okay, so some problems with wound healing. We can get scar tissue. So scar tissue doesn't function like normal tissue. It's fibrous, it's non-cellular. So if cardiac muscle tissue is replaced with scar tissue with fibrous tissue, it doesn't behave like cardiac muscle, which can cause problems with the heart functioning correctly. You can get a keloid. That's a thickened area of scar tissue. It is often covered with a shiny, smooth epidermis. So it kind of has a shiny appearance. It's basically like your body overproduced the calcium. It's like overshot the healing process. It just built too much collagen. What else? We can get infections. So general signs of infection are it's red, it's swollen, it's painful. You can see pus, okay? Cellulitis is gonna be an inflammation of skin. And sometimes it occurs somewhere where the wound wasn't. So you injured your hand, but you have cellulitis in your leg. Gangrene can result in decay or death of the tissue and the tissue starts to get bluish, greenish, even black in color as it dies. Necrotizing fasciitis, that's a severe infection, flesh eating bacteria. And what has to happen in that case is they literally have to scoop out all the affected tissue. So this can result in severe scarring or amputation. Same with gangrene can also result in amputation. And then tetanus, also called lockjaw. 
It results in painful muscle spasms and eventually can lead to death. There is a vaccine against tetanus. And um, I get my tetanus vaccine every 10 years. There's some soreness at the injection site for a few days, but better than dying. All right, what is one possible complication of wound healing? There were a lot, so just think of one. We have infections, scars, keloids, cellulitis, gangrene, necrotizing fasciitis, tetanus. Lots of options. None are good. With infections, uh, they can be treated with antibiotics. Okay. Now let's look at burns. Okay, burns. What causes burns? Heat, radiation, electric shock, strong chemicals. The severity of the burn depends on the depth of penetration and the total area affected. So even though you may have a mild burn, but it may cover more of your surface of your skin, it can still be problematic. And the risks associated with burns are infection and dehydration, both tied to the fact that skin provides waterproof protection. Remove the waterproof protection, we can get infection and dehydration. Okay, first degree burn. So what is killed are the superficial cells of the epidermis, so those upper layers. Injured, we have the deeper layers of the epidermis and maybe the papillary dermis, which is the most superficial layer of the dermis. There may be damage there. The appearance, it's inflamed, it's tender, it's red. No blisters. Okay, second degree burn. It's killed all of the epidermis, possibly the dermis. What is injured is the injury may extend into the reticular dermis, so it may extend far into the um, deeper layers of the dermis. The appearance and sensation in this case, there are blisters and it's very painful. So first degree, no blisters, second degree, blisters. Second degree goes further into the skin, deeper into the dermis. Third degree burn, it's killed all of the epidermis, all of the dermis, and the injury has probably extended into the hypodermis, potentially into deeper tissues and organs. The appearance and sensation in this case is charred and no sensation. However, it's often surrounded by first and second degree burns, so it's not like there's no pain, okay? Um, some places will categorize further as fourth degree burn, so extending into like muscle and bone. Um, but for our purposes, we're just going to focus on first, second, and third degree burns. What type of burn destroys all of the epidermis and all of the dermis? That's the third degree burn, destroys all of it. What type of burn has blisters? That's a second degree burn. That's it, that's burns and injuries. That's how the skin responds to injuries. We covered a lot and hopefully you learned something new today.